I have done more videos on Dominar Rigel the 16th than any other character in Farscape the original series. It's because I just love the little guy. Oh, let her scale the great ass no matter what. I know Rigel clearly has his faults. You, Sparky, you selfish, egotistical, self-centered little Dominar. But in my video exploring Rigel's character, I pointed out that we really should give him some sympathy. He was born to privilege. He was born Dominar. And he lived in that state for who knows how many cycles. Regardless of what you think about Rigel, he was unjustly removed from his throne by his evil cousin Bishon and falsely imprisoned for 150 cycles. That's a long time. And he was abused. He was tortured. Imagine if you were ripped from your life, thrown into prison, tortured on a regular basis, deprived of everything that you knew. You'd, you'd almost be like Crichton, actually, you know, minus the torture bit. Well, of course, there was a little bit of torture. Okay, more than a little bit of torture of Crichton. But of course, Crichton is not Rigel, and not just because one is a human and the other is a Hynerian. They are both very different people. I explored the philosophy, if you will, of Crichton in my video on what type of hero is John Crichton. And here, thanks to a viewer's suggestion, I'll go a bit into the idea of the philosophy of Rigel. You know, in philosophy, uh, and I am a philosophy professor, by the way, we talk about the worldview. You know, someone has a worldview. It's how they think and feel the world actually functions. And of course, how you think the world is really changes and forms what your approach to that world is. It's the basis of our ethics. It's the basis of our strategy of trying to navigate the world that we are in. We call it the worldview. Well, of course, the idea of a worldview doesn't work in a pan-galactic uh, science fiction adventure. Rigel does have a worldview because Rigel's been on more worlds than he can probably count. He is, of course, the dominar of a million billion suspects or whatever. Dominar to over 600 billion people. Yes, thank you. But clearly, Rigel has a philosophy of life, of how he approaches things, because he has a preconception of how the universe is. Certainly so much of how Rigel approaches the universe and everyone in it comes from his sense of privilege. He was, again, born Dominar. And however advanced Hynerian civilization is in many respects, it is still very obviously a strictly defined caste structure. I mentioned in several other of my videos how every society in Farscape seems to be autocratic, and the Hynerian Empire is similar in that respect. Dominar Rigel is to Hyneria what Emperor Stalik is to the Scaran Empire. The original series gives us very little insight into Hynerian culture. In the comic books, which I will not give away any details of the comic books here, you need to read them for yourself, but I can only say in very general terms that we do get, the, the comics do give us an insight into how Hynerian society is structured, how it is run, and it is almost medieval in its caste structure with the Dominar on top and everyone basically, other than a, a very small aristocracy, obeying the Dominar. And he's the Dominar. When Rigel does finally escape Peacekeeper custody, and he is the one who engineers their escape, Rigel very much acts like the entitled spoiled child. And in certain respects, he is. He does want to order everyone around. She's helping by applying some Delvian mysticism to the situation. Well, it doesn't help my situation, does it? Or have you forgotten how sick I am? And that's because, as he says, from birth, he had servants do everything for him. I used to have 70,000 servants. Rigel, why don't you get yourself something to eat? And during festivals, I had 50,000 more. We can imagine that Rigel, his dominarness, lived a very secluded and pampered existence. He was isolated from pretty much all other aspects of life. I've conceived hundreds of progeny. Ooh. And those are only the official ones with my wife. Oh, then you should know something about this. Oh, you should be able to help us. I was never present at the birth. Not one. Well, of course not. We are all a product of our upbringing, and we are all in one way or another ignorant of a lot of things that are outside of our experience. For Rigel, that's a lot. Again, not as much as Crichton. Crichton is completely ignorant to how things work in this new part of the universe. 
As I've expressed in all of my character study videos, and as I'll talk about in my upcoming book on Farscape, each character in the original series faces the challenge of overcoming their initial preconceptions of how the universe is. For Rigel, his preconception is he comes from privilege, and everyone around him is less privileged than him. And Farscape in the original series really skewers Rigel's sense of privilege. As I remarked in my previous video on how Farscape was woke before anyone started whining about wokeness, Farscape really does show how silly Rigel is in his sense of privilege, in his sense of everyone should listen to me. I need them to look up to me. Why? We don't. Well, you should. The Farscape writers don't hit you over the head with these things because they don't hit you over the head with anything that they do. Farscape is a very nuanced and sophisticated show. The thing is, is that Farscape does skewer Rigel's sense of privilege, mocks it, ridicules it, and forces Rigel to take this journey into realizing that he's not so privileged, he's just one of the others. Rigel learns the true meaning of being a leader. It's not ruling over other people. It's not bullying other people. And we're looking at you, Stalik. It's a sense of service to people. And like all good and worthy subjects, these aren't black and white either-or situations. Life is complicated. Well, Rigel is complicated. Farscape is complicated. It's a difficult situation. And Rigel learns how to manage being a leader with being somewhat humble. Perhaps never sufficiently humble, because he is still Rigel. But Rigel comes to understand that being a leader, being truly privileged, means being humble about what you don't know. I am not a child. No, you're an infant. You have studied, but you haven't experienced. You know nothing of life. And you do? I've been around long enough to know how ignorant I am. I don't assume the universe obeys my preconceptions. <laughs> yes, that's one of my absolute favorite clips in the whole original series. And here's another one which illustrates that Rigel learns the importance of being a leader means being aware of one's own power and the effects that one's own power has. By my actions, I have taken innocent lives. Welcome to Moya. In my time as Dominar, some of my actions resulted in the deaths of the undeserving. Even when the cause is just, it's a hard thing to accept. There's a similar lesson to what Crichton had to learn. Crichton, who was not born into power or privilege, but he learned by the end of the original series that with great power comes great responsibility. Rigel learned by the end of the Peacekeeper Wars how to balance being powerful, being a person of privilege, with doing the right thing. And that's a big change from Rigel in season one, who really did not know what it was to do the right thing. Look, I, I know I can be selfish, but given a chance, I can usually... Do what? Do the right thing? Yes. Nigel, I figure the right thing starts at the beginning of the day. Not after you've been caught. That's Crichton, the great lawgiver. Crichton, the great moral teacher. It's a simple lesson, really. Doing the right thing is going into a situation, wanting to do the right thing. And doing the right thing means accepting others and working with others. Farscape is a wonderful lesson on this. And I don't mean to beat the drum. I don't mean to be preachy because Farscape isn't preachy. But Farscape simply throws these completely different characters together and watch them work out their differences and learn to respect each other. Rigel learns to respect the others, in particular Crichton, a weak species that he looked down upon as inferior when he first met Crichton. Finally, we can say about Rigel and his worldview is that he is entitled to a certain amount of privilege. He is born Dominar. He is the rightful leader of the Hynerian Empire. And yet, he never gets that. He never gets to be who he is meant to be. In the entire grand story arc of Farscape, the, the original series, the Peacekeeper Wars miniseries, Rigel is still a bit unfulfilled. There's so much more Rigel's story that could be there. He's still alive and well and kicking around somewhere in the universe. And I do want to see more Rigel. 
I want to see Rigel continue to grow. I want to see Rigel continue to do great things, which he does in the comics. And there's still so much more to tell. And I'll talk about that in my next video. What would a continuation of Farscape look like? Because Farscape must continue.